Well, hello, Internet. A while back, I showed you guys how to make the game Asteroids using JavaScript. And if you saw that video, you would have seen that almost the entire game was based off of using trigonometry. And it just so happens that trigonometry is used in numerous different games. And in this video tutorial, I am going to show you a pretty much everything you could ever want to know about trigonometry so that you can make games and prepare for calculus and get into machine learning eventually and a whole lot more and I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Okay, trigonometry is the study of triangles including their sides and angles and they are going to be labeled with a vertex up here which say that it is called A, another vertex here, and another vertex here where these lines come together. Of course, you have your sides, and then there's going to be associated which, with each of these vertices an angle. Now, the sides are going to be labeled A, B, with a line over them, B, C, and A, C. And of course, the vertices are A, B, and C. Now you name angles using the angle's vertex in the middle. So this angle right here would either be called angle C or angle BCA or angle ACB. And as we refer more and more to coordinate planes, I'm often going to refer to quadrants and specifically quadrant numbers. This is known as quadrant one, two, three, and four. And this brings us to the difference between degrees and radians. Now, of course, if we would talk about degrees on the left and radians on the right, of course, this point right here where the circle intersects with the x-axis would be both zero degrees and 360 degrees if we would go the whole way around. Likewise, this point of intersection would be 90 degrees. This point of intersection would be 180 degrees. And down here, we would have 270 degrees. Now, one radian is going to be approximately equal to 57.295 degrees. And these individual degrees on the left would be associated with the following radians here on the right. So over here where we have our point of intersection, this would either be zero radians, and they could also be referred to as two pi radians, the distance the whole way around the circle. Likewise, this point of intersection would be pi divided by two. Over here, we would have just simply pi. Down here, we would have three pi divided by two and so forth and so on. Well, now that we're talking about degrees and radians, I thought I'd show you this little JavaScript app that I made. You can see here as I rotate around the circle how the degrees and radians change along with the statistics on this specific triangle. And you can see right here, the triangle is in the standard position. I'm gonna talk about that upcoming, and I'm also gonna show you how to convert from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. Now, whenever we are talking about degrees, they are actually divided into minutes and seconds. So for example, if you had this 135 degrees, you would then refer to this as 43 minutes and 19 seconds. And if you would want to convert this to just simply degrees, this would be equal to degrees plus minutes divided by 60 plus seconds divided by 3600. So for example, let's work through our specific example that we have right here. This would be equal to 135 plus 43 over 60 plus 19 over 3600, which would be, of course, equal to 135 plus 0.716 plus 0 0.005, approximately, of course. And this whole value right here would then be equal to approximately 100. 
35.721 degrees. Now you're often going to want to convert from degrees to radians and to do so you would multiply degrees times pi over 180 to get radians. So let's work through an example. Let's say we have 135. Well, just take pi over 180. This, of course, would be 135 pi over 180. Now, if we would want to simplify this, we would want to find the greatest common factor. So we could put 135 down here, and we could find, put 180 down here. And if we do so, we know that 135, what we want to do here with the greatest common factor is find all the prime values that we can go and multiply times each other to get 135 and 180. We're going to start with 135. So we know 5 can divide into 135. And if we divide into it, we are left with a value of 27. Well, 27 can be divided by 3. Both of these values also prime. This would leave us with a 9. And then to get 9 with by multiplying two different primes, we could easily get that with 3 times 3, of course. All right, and if we multiply all these values together, we would get 135. Now, to find the greatest common factor, you want to find these prime values that 135 and 180 have in common. So, what can we do with 180? Well, we know that we can multiply or divide 180 by 5 and get a whole number, and that number would be 36. We know that we can divide 36 by 3. If we do, we would be left with 12. Again, 12 can be divided by 3, leaving us with 4. And we know that 2 and 2 equals 4. So we know if we multiply 5 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, we are left with 180. Now what we want to do is find those values that are in common. What are those values? Well, there is a 5 right here. There is a 5 right here. There's a 3 here. There's a 3 here. There's another 3 here. There's another 3 here. And we're left with a 3 up here, but no 3 in the bottom. And two 2's in the bottom, but no 3. Or no 2's at the top. So that means that to find our greatest common factor, we take those values in common. So we take 5 times 3 times 3. And if we do that, we are left with 45. And we know that the greatest common factor is 45 for the values 135 and 180. If we come up here and we divide this by 45, the numerator, and we divide the denominator by 45, we are indeed left with a final value of 3 pi over 4. And we know that 135 degrees is equal to 3 pi over 4 radians. Now what I want to do is to convert from radians to degrees. And how you do that is you take radians and multiply it by 180 over pi to get degrees. So let's take 3 radians times 180 over pi. And if we do this, we get 540 over approximately 3.14159. And that means that 3 radians is approximately equal to 171,887 degrees. What happens if we are working with pi? Well, that actually makes it simple, or more simple. Here, let's say we have 3 pi over 4. Well, we multiply it times 180 over pi, which is equal to 540 pi over 4 pi. If we, in this situation, our pi's will cancel out, and we are left with 540 divided by 4. And if we work this out, we find that this is going to be equal to 135. All right? Degrees, of course. And there you go. That is how you convert from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. Now I want to talk about what it means to have a triangle in the standard position. Well, simply what you would do is you would make sure that one side must be on the x-axis. So if we draw a triangle in here, 
we can see that one side is indeed on the x-axis. The vertex right here also must be at the origin point. And if both of these are true, or the angle, you know, where the vertex is, must be at the origin point for our coordinate. And if this is both true, then you know you have a triangle in the standard position. Now there's a little bit of jargon here. Throw our angles in, our vertices. And what you're going to find here is this side of our triangle is known as the initial side, which lies on the x-axis. And this side right here is known as the terminal side, which is just simply the other side of our angle. Now, these sides right here, meaning AC and AB, are also called rays. And whenever you are naming them, you want to start with the point at the origin. Now, whenever you are dealing with circles, of course, this line going through the center right here would represent the diameter of the circle. And one half of that line is referred to as the radius. So this line right here is your radius. And the total line the whole way across would be your diameter. So of course the radius is one half of the diameter. The circumference or distance around your circle is going to be whatever the diameter is times pi. Your angle that you have right here, so let's say this is 135 degrees because that's kind of what it looks like, is often going to be referred to as theta. That's what that symbol is. And let's say here that we have a radius that is equal to 4. And we know that 135 degrees is equal to 3 pi over 4. Well, in this situation, we would be able to figure out the length of this arc. Well, with that information, we would be able to figure out the length of this arc. So let's go and do it. Well, the arc length, which we would refer to if this is A and this is B, we would put this symbol right here. This is going to be equal to the radius times the angle theta. This is going to work out to being 4 times 3 pi over 4, which is equal to 12 pi over 4, which of course ends up being equal to 3 pi. And 3 pi is equal to approximately 9.424. Also, on the other hand, let's say that we know that our, let's just call it, arc CD, even though it's not labeled here, let's say that we know that our arc length is 23.56, and this would be radians, and we also know that the radius is equal to 6, and we want to find the angle theta. Well, in that situation, we would take our arc length and divide it by our known radius to find that angle. And if we did that, we would get 23.56 divided by 6, and that is approximately equal to 3.926. And to finish off this tutorial, I want to talk about the difference between complementary and supplementary angles, and some jargon that goes along with parallel lines and angles and such. Now two angles are said to be complementary. So let's say we have two angles here. I'll just say one plus two. If you add those angles together and you get 90 degrees, they are called complementary. And likewise, if you take those two angles and you add them together and get 180 degrees, they are said to be supplementary. Likewise, let's say that we have two lines and they are parallel to each other. One way that you can go and denote that they are indeed parallel is to use arrowheads on them exactly like this. If you would then come in and draw across these two lines a non-parallel line, well, in that situation, we would say or we would know 
that this angle one and this angle two, when added together, are going to give you 180 degrees, or that they are supplementary angles. And for your last piece of jargon, this line that crosses these two parallel lines is referred to as the transversal. All right, so there you go, an intro to trigonometry. And I'm gonna to try to plow through the whole entire, all the knowledge you're going to need to be able to grasp trigonometry in a rather short number of videos. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. And otherwise, till next time.